Change the colour of all the lights in the ready room to blue and set the brightness to 100%. Our survey said... A few things share the name All Lights Ready Room. What? Which one did you want? Bollocks. Shut up. OK, Nabu. Change the colour of all the lights in the ready room to blue and set the brightness to 100%. Our survey said... The colour of all the lights in the ready room was set to blue and the brightness was set to 100%. <laughs> How cool is that? Now you're probably thinking, you could do that with Amazon Alexa really easily just by creating a light group and then she would actually be able to do the follow-on command of increasing the brightness. But there is so much more that I can do with the little white box that I've just shown you that I cannot do with Amazon Alexa. And that's because Amazon Alexa isn't actually artificial intelligence. She's listening out for certain commands that she already knows. And as soon as you say something she doesn't understand, she just talks bullshit. Here's a command I've never used before. OK, Nabu. Make all the lights in here cold. That's awesome! Now this little white box is from the people that bought you Home Assistant, and it can basically understand anything that I say using artificial intelligence, and then as a consequence of the fact that it understands it, translate it into my smart home system and do stuff. You guys might remember I did a whole video talking about different examples that you could use ChatGPT in Home Assistant to achieve. Should we, should we do a wibbly wobbly video edit back into the past? Let's, let's do that going. I'm wobbling. Goodbye. See you in the past. Bye-bye. Check this out. I've got a bit of a headache. Adjust the lights in the ready room accordingly. Affirmative. The lights in the ready room have been dimmed to a lower brightness with an orange hue to help alleviate your headache. I just thought of a really good one. Nisha can never remember the phrase to get that RoboVac running. Ah, uh, vacuum downstairs. <gasps> vacuum downstairs was complete. <laughs> So if this does what I think it's gonna do, it's gonna be some sort of miracle, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyway. Let's let's try this. Help the baby to sleep. Now the big question is, how come a ragtag bunch of rebels have achieved all this before the evil empire? S Star Wars reference there for you? It's just, I like, I like Star Wars. You don't seem to remember ever owning a droid. You don't seem to remember ever owning a droid. You dick. It's not even just that that they've achieved. This is all operating entirely locally without the internet and without the cloud. This means that if my internet goes down, it still works. It means that if the smart home companies that owned these devices originally go bust, it still works. And it means it's entirely private. There is no one watching my data or watching any of the things that I'm doing. Um, I have to tell you a story, I guess. We'll have to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, there was Amazon Alexa, and basically Jeff Bezos decided he was going to make a super robot that could listen to everything you said and then make lights come on. And then he said, you know what else we could do? We could have routines so that if people had smart home devices that were monitoring if their front door was open, we could have a routine within Amazon Alexa's ecosystem that said, if that door is opened, turn the light on. And they wouldn't even have to use their voice. And he rubbed his greedy little hands together and made a whole bunch of money. But then one day, a bunch of rebels came along and decided they were going to ruin this for him by creating something even better. 
and it was called Home Assistant. And the whole concept of Home Assistant is that it does all of that, but it does it without the requirement of the internet and without sending all of your data to some evil corporation. But until recently, there was no official microphone so that you could actually talk to Home Assistant. Until now. And you might be thinking to yourself, Paul, isn't Home Assistant for massive, horrible nerds that don't have sex with people anymore? Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! And, well, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, it is for those people. However, it's now so easy to set up that you can do so not just on a Raspberry Pi, but you can actually install it on little mini computers, you can install it on an old laptop, and it really does take about half an hour to get your head around how you actually do that really straightforward. There are even now devices with Home Assistant ready installed, and all you do is plug them into your network and then access them via your web browser so that you can start adding devices. It really is that simple. Now, I must admit, when this thing first arrived, I thought, that's not going to be easy to set up. It's going to be a pain in the ass because it's a bespoke, very new Home Assistant solution. But here is Paul from the past to show you just how easy it was. Paul from the past, have you forgiven me for sleeping with your wife yet? No, mate. Still, still not forgive me. All right, okay. Well, this week you find your first grey pube, so enjoy that. Found my first grey pube this week. No need to know. <laughs> okay, let's uh, plug this monster in. Just, this stuff makes me nervous because... Bespoke configuration dot yammin fires! Okay, let's get on this and find out what happens. Right, it's not just gonna find it, is it? Tell you what, let's just go in here and go to devices, settings, devices and services. Hello? Hello? Just gotta give it more Wi Fi information. Please press its authorization button. That one? That's a bit exciting, isn't it? Um, okay, Nabu. <gasps> Sexy noise. Cool. Select an area to stick it in. Uh, that's what she said. That's what she said. Hello. How can I assist? 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 So, I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? We can basically pick our own voice. It's not like Amazon where you're stuck with that cowbag. <laughs> Let go! <laughs> Right, we're going with Bella. She's kind of hot. I think that's it. So, I mean, will it work then? Because, I mean, it, I don't think it was working. Let's try something. Okay, Nabu. Colour the ready room blue. Sorry, I am not aware of any area called colour. What? <laughs> okay, Nabu. Change the colour of the ready room to blue. Sorry, I am not aware of any area called colour of the ready room. What? You're stupider than I thought. <laughs> it's still working as I would want it to. Oh, I think we need to do some work here. She's very dumb. Very dumb indeed. This wasn't quite that simple. So initially, when you install this thing, you can use very basic phrases. You could say, for example, OK, Nabu, switch the studio lights off. Quiet, I'm talking. <laughs> that works. That works really, really well straight off the bat. That works great because it understands the very specific commands of switch and turn, I think. As soon as I started saying things like change, it didn't understand what I meant until I installed ChatGPT. I have also installed Google Gemini and I've been flipping between the two and I don't know which one I'm gonna use. They're very, very easy to install into Home Assistant and you basically use those things to control your smart home as an intermediary. So you're talking to that speaker, that speaker is speaking to ChatGPT and ChatGPT is controlling your smart home. This is awesome, but for one thing, it's it's no longer local. At that point, you're having to go out to the ChatGPT cloud, and it's whether or not you trust ChatGPT with your information. I'm not secretly capturing all of your information so that I can later turn you into an artificial intelligence version of yourself and wear you as a skin suit, I promise. 
Now, eventually, the Home Assistant crew will get this thing working far better and you won't feel like you need to install ChatGPT or Google Gemini. But if you do, you get a really, really good experience once you get it right. Okay, Nabu, lock the pod bay doors. So first of all, that's amazingly quick, but also look how far away the device is and it's responding really, really well. It's all the way over here, look. It's that thing over there. It's miles away. Um, let's talk a bit quieter. Okay, Nabu. Unlock the pod bay doors. No way. So, so good. It's got a little volume thing. Okay. Okay. A record player. I got a little bit excited about that earlier. That's got a button. You got quite a sexy voice. That is kind of you to say, Captain. Shut up, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> Stop it, you're turning me on. Don't call me Captain. So, um, yeah, this has got the whole buttons for doing that stuff, but it's got two built-in microphones so you can actually use it from right the way across the room, um, which just works astoundingly well. It's got some little output as well to go into speakers, which is something I've been missing from the Echo Dot for quite some time, because that means you can get really good sound out of this thing. Um, and aside from that, it's just a very basic device with a, a stop listening button on it. Oh, and the noises. The noises are cool. <laughs> I could listen to that all day. Uh, and, the, and the wake sound as well. Okay, Nabu. Now the time of my so just to be clear, you can't just take this thing and replace Amazon Alexa. You need this thing plus Home Assistant, and you'll need Home Assistant installed on something, whether that be a Raspberry Pi, whether it be a little Intel Nook like I've got, whether it be an old laptop that you've got in a cupboard, or whether it be a device that you've purchased from somewhere that already has Home Assistant built in. You might be a person thinking, I don't really need Home Assistant. I already have an Amazon Echo and it does everything I need. And that's fine. Just enjoy this video for what it is. A bald man's midlife crisis. Hello, darkness, my friend. And as you already know, this thing can never answer your questions. Alexa. Who is Paul Hibbert? This might answer your question. According to Wikipedia, Paul Anthony Hibbert was an Australian cricketer who played in one test in... One test! Alexis, shut up. One test match he played... One t I'm the famous Paul Hibbert. I'm kind of a big deal. Okay, Nabu. Who is Paul Hibbert? Paul Hibbert is a popular British YouTuber known for his humorous takes on various topics, particularly technology, gadgets, and lifestyle content. He creates entertaining videos that often include product reviews, unboxings, and commentary. I didn't write that. That's that's real. That's an actual thing. Um, and I know that I'm kind of kidding around here, but seriously, think of all the times you've asked Amazon anything and you've gone, no, no, that's not what I meant, or she just doesn't have the answer. ChatGPT knows practically everything. She doesn't go, oh, here's an answer from the Alexa contributors community. Shut up, Amazon. Get a grip. And finally, I've shown you guys this before, but it still just blows my mind. Okay, Nabu. Where is Nisha? Nisha is currently not home. It knows that because Home Assistant knows where my wife is. It's able to tell me what zone she is in, or in this case, what zone she is not in. That sort of thing is just, it just really sets it apart from Amazon. And that's why I really desperately want to move to this. I can't, I really can't. Let me start out by saying this. If you're a Home Assistant fanboy, buy it immediately. You won't care about any of the things I'm about to tell you because you will find workarounds for them. If, however, you're looking to simply move from using an Amazon Echo and you're thinking, this is it, this is the final push, I'm going to get Home Assistant. I mean, get Home Assistant anyway, it's way better than any other smart home setup that you've got currently, but 
this is not going to replace your Amazon Echo without quite a bit of work. It was easy enough to get ChatGPT working, it was easy enough to get Google Gemini working. I literally actually asked ChatGPT on my computer, how do I get these things working? And it walked me through it step by step, and it really did take less than five minutes. But the problem is, it's mental. Okay, Nabu, set the chill out mode scene. Affirmative, the chill out mode scene was completed. Oh, you're gonna work this time, eh? That's random as f <laughs> That's, This is my point. So earlier when I did that, it set the chill out scene and then said, now setting 100% brightness. Yes, that's how I like to chill out, with my eyes blinded by every light in the room. Um, yeah, and, and just now worked fine. Just because I'm probably because I'm trying to demonstrate something on camera. You son of a bit. It's bollocks. Uh, it's conversational bollocks. And I think that's worth noting. I can actually have a back and forth conversation with her in which she understands the context. And she actually remembers that I'm in this room when I'm having a conversation. If I say turn the lights on in the ready room, she'll turn them on in the ready room. I no longer have to tell her I'm in the ready room. She remembers that that's where we are. Um, but <laughs> the problem is, this 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 brings us on to the next problem. She stops listening as soon as she asks you, she'll, she'll say, do you want me to do X, Y, and Z? Yeah, I do, yeah, but I don't want to have to say OK Nabu every single time because that's going to get really annoying. Um, and I think maybe the Home Assistant crew should have sorted that before they started shipping these speakers because I mean, it's going to keep asking you questions and you're going to have to keep going OK Nabu and then answer it. yeah. <laughs> Alright, stop listening. Very good though, isn't it? Reacts very well. And finally, I figured with this being Home Assistant, I would be able to pick my own wake word. There would be no restriction on this. And yet it is restricted. It's restricted to OK Nabu, which I'm using. It's restricted to Hey Jarvis, which is pretty cool, except it, it gets garbage and doesn't work. Three three white words, that's all you get. Um, and the only one that works properly, in as far as I can tell, is OK Nabu. If I use Hey Jarvis, it fails like eight times out of ten. It's really frustrating. And Mycroft? Who's Mycroft? The Home Assistant community are probably very angry at me, right? Now because I think it's something important to them. Minecraft is the only voice assistant anybody should trust, and you have bastardized its name with ChatGPT, you disgusting pile of vomit! I want to call it computer. I've been doing that for a long time because I'm a massive Star Trek nerd, but uh, that currently isn't a thing. All of the things I've just mentioned, I shall update the description once they improve. So as soon as I hear something from the Home Assistant community saying, try this again, it works amazingly now, I shall update the description to that effect. So go check there in case this video is a little bit old and you can go and find out if this thing is like a perfect replacement for the Echo now. Um, right now, I mean, will I replace my Echo? Maybe, I maybe for this room. I think it would drive my wife insane. Um, until it works properly, at which point I'm going to buy so many of these things. It works fantastically well. Um, the only thing I haven't said about yet is Spotify. Uh, doesn't work by default, and again, I think this is something the Home Assistant community should probably have tackled before they started shipping this thing, because everybody's going to want to do that. If I can plug this thing into a set of speakers, which I can, and I can talk to it with my face hole, the first thing I'm going to want to do is start playing music. Um, yeah, Home Assistant developers, if you're watching this now, please, Spotify, put Spotify in this um, and just tidy up a couple of little bits and bobs and I will be pitching this from the rooftops. I will be telling people everywhere I go, even on trains, I use Home Assistant! Buy this, I would. If you're a Home Assistant fan, buy it. Seriously, this is one of the coolest things I have ever played with. It's just a shame that there are a few kinks to work out before I got my hands on it. Perhaps I shouldn't have bought it yet. My own fault, really, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is literally called Preview Edition. I can't complain. This is amazing. If you're one of the developers of this thing or you are familiar with what's happening with this thing, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know where this thing is headed because it is one of the most exciting things I've seen in absolutely ages. If you're not subscribed already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you want to be like these incredible people, 
They're the reason this video exists. If you want to be a patron, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, my X, my threads, my Instagrams, and my TikToks. Coming out there, it can be best friends. See you next time.